What are the facts about the Titanic? As the brainchild of Lord William James Perry and J. Bruce Ismay, Titanic was a marriage of British technology and American money. Perry was head of Harland and Wolfe, a firm known for building the sturdiest and best ships in the British Isles. Ismay was chairman of the White Star Line, owned by American financier J. Pierpont Morgans, 1837-1913, International Mercantile Marine. In 1907 Paris and Ismay came up with a plan to compete with the top-notch Cunard liners by surpassing them both in size and luxury. The ship they planned, Titanic, was built in Belfast along with her sister ship. Olympic, which Titanic exceeded in gross tonnage but not in length. Titanic was 882 feet long, 92 feet wide, and weighed 46,328 gross tons. Nine steel decks rose as high as an 11-story building. Registered as a British ship and manned by British officers. Titanic was launched on May 31, 1911. The ship was everything Paris and Ismay had planned. Titanic's size not only allowed more room to accommodate the increasing number of steerage. Cheapest fare, passengers who were immigrating to the United States. But also featured lavish elegance for first and second class travelers. Creature comforts included the first shipboard swimming pool, Turkish bath, gymnasium, and squash court. First-class cabins were nothing short of opulent. Including coal-burning fireplaces in the sitting rooms and full-size, four-poster beds in the bedrooms. Additionally, there was a loading crane and a compartment for automobiles. The ship's hospital even featured a modern operating room. With her steerage full and some of society's most prominent individuals on board. The RMS Titanic left the docks at Southampton, England, on April 10, 1912. New York Harbor was her final destination. On April 14, the ship was traveling in the exceptionally calm and icy waters of the North Atlantic. Near Newfoundland. At 11.40 p.m., Titanic scraped an iceberg. Sustaining damage along the starboard, right, side, from the bow to about midship. The Titanic, which immediately began taking on water. Sank in 2 hours and 40 minutes in the early morning hours of April 15. Only 711 of the 2,224 aboard survived. The 1,513 lost included American industrialists and businessmen John Jacob Astor IV. Isidore Strauss, of R. H. Macy's, Benjamin Guggenheim, and Harry Elkins Widener. Survivors mostly women and children who had been traveling as first-class passengers were picked up by the Carpathia. Which was 58 miles away when it received Titanic's distress signals. It took three and a half hours for Carpathia to reach the site of the disaster. By which time the Titanic was gone. What are the basic beliefs of Buddhism?
Buddha taught the Four Noble Truths, existence is suffering, the cause of suffering is desire. Through total transcendence, called nirvana, one may suspend suffering. And to end suffering one must follow a certain path called the Eightfold Noble Path. The path prescribes moral conduct, specifically, 1. Knowing the truth, 2. Resolving to resist evil. 3. Using speech properly so as not to hurt others, 4. Demonstrating respect for life, morality, and property through one's actions, 5. Working in a job that does not harm others, 6. Making an effort to free one's mind of evil. 7. Mindfulness, or controlling one's thoughts and feelings, and 8. Concentration. In some places, the beliefs and practices of Buddhism are combined with those of Hinduism and the Shinto religion. How were the southern states brought back into the Union? Even before the Civil War had ended, Washington, D. C. considered the difficult problem of how to rejoin the seceding states with the North. Some lawmakers felt the southern states should be treated as if they were territories that were gained through war. Others, including both Abraham Lincoln, 1809-1865, and Andrew Johnson, 1808-1875. Reasoned that since secession was illegal, the South belonged and always had to the Union. And therefore the states ought to be brought back into their proper relationship with the federal government. They favored punishing the southern leaders but not the states themselves. President Abraham Lincoln developed his 10% plan, as soon as 10% of a state's population had taken an oath of loyalty to the United States, the state would be allowed to set up a new government. But Congress opposed it, proclaiming the policy too mild, and responded by passing the Wade Davis Bill. June 1864 making the requirements for statehood more rigid. Instead of Lincoln's 10%, Congress required that a majority of voters in each state would need to swear their loyalty. In an ironclad oath, before statehood could be restored. Further, the bill stipulated that the constitution of each state had to abolish slavery and that confederate Military leaders were to be prohibited from holding political office and otherwise disenfranchised. Lincoln opposed the bill and neither signed nor returned it before Congress was dismissed. And so the Wade Davis measure failed to become law. When Lincoln was assassinated the following April, the matter remained unsettled. His successor, President Andrew Johnson, soon put forth a plan to readmit the states. He called for each state constitution to abolish slavery and repudiate the Confederate war debt. Further, a majority of voters in each state needed to vow allegiance to the Union. Once a state had reorganized itself under this plan, Johnson required the state legislature to approve the 13th Amendment, abolishing slavery in the United States. When Congress reconvened in December 1865 for the first time since Lincoln's assassination, all former Confederate states except Texas had complied with the president's specifications for statehood. 
but these new states had also set up black codes, severely restricting the rights of blacks. Further, there was violence against blacks who were the victims of attacks by white southerners including Members of the newly formed Ku Klux Klan, a secret white organization that spread terror across the South. Congress became determined to fight the readmission of the southern states by Johnson's lenient standards. And it refused to seat any representatives from the South. The move angered President Johnson. And political volleying between the legislature and the executive office began. Ultimately it was Congress that determined the process by which the southern states were readmitted. By the summer of 1868 the legislatures of seven, of eleven, southern states had approved the 14th Amendment. The remaining four states Georgia, Mississippi, Texas, and Virginia complied with the requirements for statehood by 1870, at which time the Union was restored. And congressional representatives from the South were again welcomed in Washington. In the intervening period, between Congress's rejection of President Johnson's plan for statehood and the ratification of the 14th and 15th Amendments, the South was governed by military administrators who protected people and property and oversaw the reorganization of government in each state. Backslash who was Carry Nation? The Kentucky-born Cary Nation, 1846-1911, became famous as a temperance agitator in the early 1900s. The saloon was illegal in her resident state of Kansas. And she felt it was her divine duty to take her hatchet to ruining any place that sold intoxicants. Between 1899 and 1909, she went on wrecking expeditions, which she called hatchetations. Throughout the state, incurring the wrath of business owners and government officials. Though many might have favored national prohibition of alcohol. Nation's actions were extreme to say the least, causing her to be arrested, imprisoned 30 times, and even shot at. She persisted, however, buoyed by the belief that she was performing a public and even divine service. The propitiously named Carry A Nation, who tried, it seems, to carry the nation straight to the water fountain, did not live to see prohibition made into a national policy in 1917 nor to see it revoked in 1933. Why were Spain's King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella so powerful? The 1469 marriage of Ferdinand, 1452-1516, and Isabella, 1451-1504, brought previously separate Spanish kingdoms, Aragon and Castile, under their joint control. Together the monarchs went on to rule Spain and expand their realm of influence until Isabella's death in 1504. Ferdinand ruled without his wife thereafter. Theirs was a reign that seemed to have religion on its side, in 1496 Pope Alexander VI conferred. Upon each of them the title Catholic, as in, Ferdinand the Catholic and Isabella the Catholic. 
and for good reason, because the kings and queens most well-known acts seem to have been motivated by their beliefs. It was Ferdinand and Isabella who in 1478 established the infamous Spanish Inquisition. A court that imprisoned or killed Catholics who were suspected of not following religious teachings. While the Inquisition was aimed at discovering and punishing Muslims and Jews who had converted to Catholicism but who were thought to be insincere, soon all Spaniards came to fear its power. In 1482 the monarchs undertook a war with the Muslim Moors. Conquering the last Moorish stronghold at Granada in 1492, and forcing them back to Africa after four centuries of occupation and influence in the Iberian Peninsula, Spain and Portugal. The recovery of Iberia had been motivated by religion, when the king and queen expelled the Moors. They also believed they were expelling Islam from their kingdom. That year, 1492, was a fateful one for the Spanish, not only were the Moors driven out, but Ferdinand and Isabella also turned their attention to the Jewish threat, expelling them, too. Those who remained went underground with their faith, those Iberian Jews who migrated spread their division of Judaism. Called Sephardim, to North Africa and the Middle East. Most students of history know 1492 best as the year that explorer Christopher Columbus, 1451-1506, sailed to the New World. It was Ferdinand and Isabella who sponsored his voyage, believing that the conquered lands would not only add to their authority but would provide new territory for the spread of Catholicism. The Spaniards soon emerged as a formidable sea power in the Atlantic. For all their fervor, Isabella and Ferdinand were also interested in education and the arts. And they sponsored advances in both areas during their reign. Their legacy included their grandson Charles V, 1500-1558, who, through marriage, became Holy Roman Emperor and ruled from 1519 to 1558 as one of the all-powerful Habsburgs. What was National Road? National Road was the first federal road. Today, the path of the Great Westward Route is followed closely by U.S. Highway. Forty Congress authorized construction of the road in 1806 to answer the cry of settlers who demanded a better route across the Appalachians into the Ohio River Valley. Originally called Cumberland Road, Work began in 1811 in Cumberland, Maryland. Progress was slow, the road did not reach present-day Wheeling. West Virginia, a distance of 130 miles, until six years later. But in 1830 President Andrew Jackson, 1767-1845, gave the project a boost when he signed. An act of Congress appropriating $130,000 to survey and extend the Cumberland Road. Westward. Jackson called it a national road, it was also called the Great National Pike. By the time the route was completed in 1852, it extended westward from Wheeling to cross Ohio. Indiana, and Illinois where it ended at Vandalia, 
east of St. Louis. The project cost the government more than $7 million to complete but accomplished what had been hoped. National roads spurred development in the Old Northwest, the present-day states of Ohio, Michigan, Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, and part of Minnesota, and the Far West, the territories west of the Mississippi River. The overland route was traversed in covered wagons and conestogas by pioneers and tradesmen. Large quantities of goods, including livestock, grain, and finished products were transported both east and west. Towns along the route boomed. By the end of the century, the road diminished in importance as settlers, new immigrants and goods were transported along the railroads that had begun to crisscross the nation in 1865. Nevertheless, the National Road heralded the future of federal transportation projects that would knit the nation together. Was the Civil War fought because of slavery? For years, American school children learned that the question of slavery was the only cause of the Civil War. 1861 to 65 with 19 free states and 15 slave states making up the Union, Abraham Lincoln. 1809 to 1865 had called the country a house divided even before he became president. While slavery was central to the conflict, many believe the bloody four-year war had other causes as well. By the mid-1800s important differences had developed between the South and the North and many maintain these differences. Or vestiges of them, are still with the country today. The economy in the South was based on agriculture while the North was industrialized. The ideals and lifestyles of each region reflected these economic realities. Southerners believed their agrarian lifestyle was dependent on the labor of slaves. For a long time, slavery was viewed by some as a necessary evil. But by the early 1800s the view that slavery is morally wrong was beginning to take hold. Northern abolitionists had begun a movement to end slavery in the states. But, except for a small anti-slavery faction, these views were not shared in the South. There were other factors that contributed to the Declaration of Secession and the formation of the Confederacy. Although some still argue these factors were merely smoke screens for the defense of slavery. Disputes between the federal government and the states had limited the power of the states. And this policy was called into question by Southerners. Further, the political party system was in disarray in mid-1850s America. The disorder prompted feelings of distrust for the elected politicians who set national policy. Before the 1860 presidential election, Southern leaders urged that the South secede from the Union if Lincoln, who had publicly taken a stand against slavery, won. What happened to the Celts during the Roman Empire? The Celts were an Indo-European people who by 500 b. 
sea had spread across what is now France, Italy, Portugal, Spain, and the British Isles. And by 200 BC they had expanded as far as present-day Bulgaria and Greece. When the Romans conquered much of Europe, about 300 BC, many Celts were absorbed into the Roman Empire. However, those Celts living in Ireland, Scotland, Wales, Southwest England, and Brittany, in northwestern France, were able to maintain their cultures. And it is in these regions that people of Celtic origin still live today. When was the flush toilet invented? The invention dates to the 1590s and is credited to Sir John Harrington. 1561 to 1612, hence its nickname, the John. A courtier and godson of England's Queen Elizabeth I, 1533 to 1603. Harrington installed a flush lavatory in one of the Queen's palaces. Though he was a serious scholar and translator. Harrington was also a rebel who wrote controversial satire, leading to his banishment. His invention of the so called water closet was not taken seriously in its day. But over the following two centuries, various inventors worked to improve it. Ultimately developing the plumbed sanitary toilet, a flush commode that is connected to plumbing and sewers or septic tanks. Why does the Leaning Tower of Pisa lean? The famous bell tower in Pisa, in northwestern Italy, leans because of the unstable soil on which it was built. Construction began in 1173 on the approximately 180 foot campanile. It began to lean as soon as the first three floors were completed. Nevertheless, building continued and the seven-story structure was finished between 1360 and 1370. Leaning a bit more each year, by the time it was closed for repairs in 1990. The tower tilted 14.5 feet out of line when measured from the top story. Engineers on the project worked to stabilize the foundation and straighten it slightly, to prevent damage. The tower, which was built alongside a church and a baptistery, would probably not be remarkable if it were not for its slant. But with its characteristic angle, it continues to attract tourists to the small town on the Arno River. When was email invented? Short for electronic mail, email was invented in 1971 by computer engineer Ray Tomlinson, 1941, who developed a communications program for computer users at the Advanced Research Projects Agency, ARPA. The result was ARPANET, a program that allowed text messages to be sent to any other computer on the local network. ARPANET is now hailed as the Model T of the information superhighway.
The technology expanded in the 1970s with the use of modems, which connect computers via telephone lines. Within a decade of its introduction, email had become widely used as a communications mode in the workplace. In the 1990s usage expanded rapidly to internet users at home, schools, and elsewhere. Some technology analysts call email the killer app of the internet. The most powerful tool on the worldwide computer network. How many popes have there been? The number given by the Vatican is 265, including Pope Benedict XVI. The former German cardinal who was elected on April 19, 2005, to succeed John Paul II, 1920-2005. Other lists cite 266 popes, the discrepancy arises around Stephen II who died in 752 after he was elected but before he could be consecrated. Except for a few brief interruptions when the papacy was vacant. The Roman Catholic Church has been led by the Pope as its visible head, and Jesus Christ as its invisible head. Since Jesus said to the Apostle Peter, And I say also unto thee, that thou art Peter. And upon slash this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell slash shall not prevail against it. Matthew 16 18. The Apostle Peter, who was earlier called Simon and is also called Simon. Peter became the leader of the Christian community after the crucifixion of Christ. And he made Jerusalem the headquarters of his preaching in Palestine. According to second-century sources, Peter traveled to Rome about 55 AD and became the city's first bishop. During the persecution of Christians under Roman Emperor Nero, 37-68 AD, Peter was crucified on Vatican Hill in the year 64. He died a martyr and was canonized. St. Peter's Church the principal church of the Christian world, is said to have been built over Peter's burial place. These events in Rome during St. Peter's time long after gave the city special status within the church. It further established the site of the Papal Palace in Vatican City, which is an independent state that lies within the city of Rome and the majority of popes, all but 18, have been Italian, when John Paul II, who was born in Poland, was elected pope in 1978, he was the first non-Italian pope since 1523. What did Manifest Destiny have to do with the expansion of the United States? He doctrine of Manifest Destiny emerged in the United States. In the early 1800s and by the 1840s had taken firm hold. Adherents believed that Americans had a God-given right and duty to expand their territory and influence throughout North America. Manifest Destiny was a rallying cry for expansionism and prompted rapid U.S. acquisition of territory during the 1800s. 
The acquisitions began in 1803 with the purchase of Louisiana Territory from France. In 1819 Florida and the southern strip of Alabama and Mississippi, collectively called the Old Southwest, were acquired from Spain in the adams nice Treaty, in 1845 Texas was annexed after white settlers fought for and declared freedom from Mexico. Forming the Republic of Texas and petitioning the Union for statehood. In 1846 the western border between Canada and the United States was determined to lie at 49 degrees north latitude. The northern boundary of what is today Washington State, in 1848 by the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo. The United States secured New Mexico and California after winning the Mexican War. 1846-48, and in 1853 Southern Arizona was acquired from Mexico in the Gadsden Purchase. With the 1853 agreement the United States had completed the acquisition of territory that makes up the contiguous states. The expansionist doctrine of manifest destiny was again invoked as justification for the Spanish-American War. 1898, which was fought over the issue of freeing Cuba from Spain. Spain lost the war, dissolving its empire. Cuba achieved independence, though it was occupied by U.S. troops for three years. By the close of the 19th century, manifest destiny had resulted in U.S. acquisition of the outlying territories of Alaska. Hawaiian Islands, Midway Islands, the Philippines. Puerto Rico, Guam, Wake Island, American Samoa, Panama Canal Zone, and U.S. Virgin Islands. What is the Federal Reserve? It is the central banking system in the United States, created by a 1913 Act of Congress. The Federal Reserve Act, sometimes called the Glass-Owens Bill. The legislation provided for a stable central banking system after the system set up. By the National Bank Act of 1863 proved ineffective in managing the nation's currency. In responding to economic growth, or in exerting a controlling influence on the economy. The Federal Reserve Act created 12 regional Federal Reserve Banks, in Boston, Massachusetts. New York, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Cleveland, Ohio, Richmond, Virginia, Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, St. Louis, Missouri. Minneapolis, Minnesota, Kansas City, Missouri, Dallas, Texas, and San Francisco, California. These institutions operate as bankers' banks, member banks, commercial institutions. Use their accounts with the Federal Reserve in the same way that consumers use their accounts on deposit at commercial banks. All national banks must be members of the Federal Reserve System. State banks may join the system upon meeting certain requirements. The Federal Reserve Act also established a Federal Reserve Board. Now called the Board of Governors, to supervise the system. The board consists of seven members who are appointed by the President of the United States and are approved by the Senate. To reduce the possibility of nearsighted political influence. 
Members serve staggered 14-year terms, one of the 14 terms expires every other year. The duties of the Federal Reserve include lending money to commercial, member, banks. Directing the Reserve Bank's purchase and sale of U.S. government securities on the open market. Setting reserve requirements, for how much money needs to be in the U.S. Treasury. And regulating the discount rate, the interest rate the Federal Reserve charges commercial banks for loans. Which is one of the system's principal influences on the economy. In performing these duties, the Federal Reserve, often called the Fed in financial circles, can expand, loosen, or contract, tighten, the supply of money in circulation. The Federal Reserve also issues the national currency and supervises and regulates the activities of banks and their holding companies. It began operation in November 1914. The central bank systems of other developed nations include the Bank of Canada, Banque de France, and the Deutsche Bundesbank, of Germany. Separation of church and state affected the public schools? Religion in American public schools continued to be a hot topic throughout the 1900s. But the Supreme Court rulings in the middle of the 20th century proved to have the most bearing on religious practices in state-supported schools. On June 17, 1963, in an 8-to-1 ruling, the Supreme Court decided that prayer and Bible reading in U.S. public schools were unconstitutional. The decision, in the case of Skemp v. Abington Township, culminated a series of high court rulings over the course of almost 20 years, which gradually removed the practice of religious activities from public schools. The rulings began in 1947 with the New Jersey case of Everson v. Board of Education, in which the court, in a 5-4 vote, defended the use of state funds to transport children to parochial schools, but warned that a wall of separation between church and state must be maintained. In 1948, in McCollum v. Board of Education, the court banned a program of religious instruction from the schools of Champaign, Illinois. In Engel v. Vital, 1962, the justices of the Supreme Court ruled that the state-composed prayer recited in New York classrooms was unconstitutional. How did the Renaissance spread from Italy to the rest of Europe? Eventually the ideas born in Italy during the 1300s spread northward. Which is at least in part attributable to German inventor Johannes Gutenberg's printing press, c. 1440-1450, before long, the spirit and ideas that were taking hold in Italy reached France, Germany, England, and the Netherlands, where the Renaissance continued into the 1600s. One of the most important figures of the Northern Renaissance was the Dutch humanist Desideratus Erasmus, c. 1466-1532. Whose book in praise of folly 
1509, is a blistering criticism of the clergy, scholars, and philosophers of his day. Another notable figure of the Northern Renaissance was Englishman Sir Thomas More. 1478-1535, who was a statesman and advisor to the king. More's Utopia, published in 1516, criticizes the times by envisioning an ideal society in which land is communally held, men and women alike are educated. Police are unnecessary, politicians are honest, and where there is religious tolerance. The works of Flemish artist Jan van Eyck, 1395-1441, including his groundbreaking portrait Man in a Red Turban. 1433, demonstrate that the principles of the Renaissance were felt as strongly in Northern Europe as they were in Italy. How did the Treaty of Versailles pave the way for World War II? In the aftermath of World War I, 1914-18, Germany was severely punished. One clause in the Treaty of Versailles even stipulated that Germany take responsibility for causing the war. In addition to its territorial losses, Germany was also made to pay for an allied military force that would occupy the west bank of the Rhine River, intended to keep Germany in check for the next 15 years. The treaty also limited the size of Germany's military. In 1921 Germany received a bill for reparations, it owed the Allies $33 million. While the post-war German government had been made to sign the Treaty of Versailles under the threat of more fighting from the Allies, the German people nevertheless faulted their leaders for accepting such strident terms. Not only was the German government weakened, but public resentment over the Treaty of Versailles soon developed into a strong nationalist movement led by German Chancellor and Führer Adolf Hitler, 1889-1945. Who was Tamerlane? Tamerlane 1336-1405, was a Central Asian conqueror who gained power in the late 1300s. His Islamic name was Timur, Tamerlane is the English version. He was a barbaric warrior and a brilliant military leader whose fearsome tactics earned him the name Tamerlane the Terrible. By 1370 he was a powerful warlord whose government was centered in the province of Samarkand. In present-day Uzbekistan. In 1383 he launched a series of conquests that lasted more than 20 years and gained him control of a vast region including Iraq. Armenia, Mesopotamia, Georgia, Russia, and parts of India. He died in 1405, on an expedition to conquer China. His body was entombed in an elaborate mausoleum, which is considered a treasure of Islamic art. After his death, his sons and grandsons fought for control of his dynasty, which remained intact for another hundred years. Tamerlane and his heirs built Samarkand into a great city. In its day it was a center for culture and scholarship in Central Asia.
What was populism? A commoner's movement, in the United States populism was formalized in 1891 with the founding of the Populist Party. Which worked to improve conditions for farmers and laborers. In the presidential election of 1892, the party supported its own political candidate. The former, third party, Greenback candidate James B. Weaver. 1833-1912. Though Weaver lost, the populists remained a strong force. In the next presidential election, of 1896, they backed Democratic Party candidate William Jennings Bryan. 1860-1925, a self-proclaimed commoner who was sympathetic to the causes of the Farmers' Alliances and of the National Grange. Reform-minded agricultural organizations, as well as the nation's workers. Brian lost to William McKinley, 1843-1901, and soon after the election the Populist Party began to fall apart. Disappearing altogether by 1908. Nevertheless, the party's initiatives continued to figure in the nation's political life for the next two decades and many populist ideas were made into laws including the free coinage of silver and government issue of more paper money, greenbacks, to loosen the money supply. Adoption of a graduated income tax, passage of an amendment allowing for the popular election of U.S. Senators. The Constitution provided for their election by the state legislatures, passage of antitrust laws. To combat the monopolistic control of American business, and implementation of the eight hour workday. Since the early 1900s, political candidates and ideas have continued to be described as populist, meaning they favor the rights of and uphold the beliefs and values of the common people. Why did so many Americans protest U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War? The Vietnam War, 1954-75, divided the American public. The anti-war movement maintained that the conflict in Southeast Asia did not pose a risk to you. As security, contrary to the domino effect that Washington DC foresaw. And in the absence of a threat to national security, protesters wondered, what are we fighting for? Meanwhile, President Lyndon B. Johnson, 1908 to 1973, slowly stepped up the number of troops sent to Vietnam. Many never came home, and those who did came home changed. Mass protests were held, including the hallmark of the era. The sit-in. Protesters accused the U.S. government of not only involving Americans in a conflict in which the country had no part, but of supporting a corrupt, unpopular and undemocratic government in South Vietnam. Those Americans who supported the nation's fight against communism eventually became frustrated by the United States' inability to achieve a decisive victory in Vietnam. Even for the so-called hawks, who supported the war. The mounting costs of the war hit home when President Johnson requested new taxes. As the casualty count soared, public approval of U.S. participation in Vietnam dropped.
by the end of the 1960s. Under increasing public pressure, the government began to withdraw American troops from Vietnam. The evacuation of the ground troops was not complete until 1973. But even then, soldiers who were missing in action, MIAs, and prisoners of war, POWs, were left behind. What happened at Watergate? Watergate is a complex of upscale apartment and office buildings in Washington, D. C. In July 1972 five men were caught breaking into the Democratic Party's national headquarters there. Among these men was James McCourt Jr. 1924, the security coordinator of the Committee for the Re-election of the President, CRP. McCord was among those working to get President Richard Nixon. 1913-1994, a Republican, elected to a second term in office. All five men who were caught in the break-in were indicted on charges of burglary and wiretapping, as were CRP AG. Gordon Liddy, 1930, and White House consultant E. Howard Hunt. 1918. Five of the men pleaded guilty to the charges. McCord and Liddy were tried and found guilty. In February 1972 five months before the break-in at Watergate President Nixon had traveled to China. Becoming the first U.S. president to visit that country. In May he traveled to Moscow. Where he signed the Strategic Arms Limitation Treaty, SALT I Treaty. The first such treaty between the United States and the USSR when the election was held in November. Nixon won in a landslide victory over the Democratic candidate George McGovern, 1922-1998. But early in Nixon's second term, which began in 1973, the Watergate affair became a Full-blown political scandal when convicted burglar James McCord wrote a letter to District Court Judge John Sirica. 1904-1992, charging a massive cover-up in the Watergate break-in. A special Senate committee began televised investigations into the affair. Before it was all over, about 40 people, including high-level government officials had been charged with crimes including burglary, wiretapping of citizens, violating campaign finance laws by accepting contributions in exchange for political favors, the use of government agencies to harm political opponents, and sabotage. Among those prosecuted were John Dean, 1938. Former White House Counsel, and Attorney General John Mitchell, 1913-1988. It was revealed that members of the Nixon administration had known about the Watergate burglary. It was also discovered that the President had taped conversations in the Oval Office. When Dean and Mitchell were convicted, public confidence in President Nixon plummeted. In July 1974 the Judiciary Committee of the House of Representatives was preparing articles of impeachment. Including one that charged the President with obstruction of justice, against the President. 
the impeachment proceedings would not make it as far as the Senate. Nixon chose to resign on August 9, 1974. He was the first and so far only U.S. president to resign. From office Shortly after taking office, Nixon's successor, Gerald R. Ford. 1913, pardoned Nixon. But Watergate remains a dark chapter in the nation's history. How old is baseball? Baseball, America's pastime, is more than 200 years old. According to legend, the sports originator was U.S. Army officer Abner Doubleday. 1819-1893, who was credited with inventing and naming the game in 1839, while he was attending school in Cooperstown. New York the site of the Baseball Hall of Fame and Museum. But in 2004 a document was uncovered in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Citing a 1791 bylaw prohibiting the playing of baseball too close to, within 80 yards of, the town's meeting hall. Historians verified the authenticity of the document and its date. This is believed to be the earliest written record of the game and it establishes that the stick and ball sport was being played 42 years before Doubleday's involvement. Baseball historians have long acknowledged that the sport, which is similar to the English games of cricket and rounders, had not one father, but thousands. Although the 2004 discovery indicates that the game was already in existence. In 1791, and popular enough to be the subject of a town ordinance. It was in the 1800s that baseball developed into the game Americans still love today. The first baseball club, the Knickerbocker Baseball Club was organized by American sportsman Alexander Cartwright, 1820-1892, in 1842 in New York City. By 1845 the team had developed a set of 20 rules, which included specifications for where the bases are positioned and how runners can be tagged as out. The rules also defined a field of play, outside of which balls are foul. The so-called New York game spread in popularity after a famous 1846 match in Hoboken, New Jersey. By 1860 there were at least 50 organized ball clubs in the country. Union soldiers helped spread the game during the American Civil War, 1861-65. And the popularity of the sport greatly increased during the last three and a half decades of the 19th century. The first professional baseball team was the Cincinnati Red Stockings, which began play 1869. In 1876, the National League, NL, was founded, it included teams in Boston, Chicago. Cincinnati, Ohio, Hartford, Connecticut, Louisville, Kentucky, New York, Philadelphia, and St. Louis, Missouri. By the 1880s the sport had evolved into big business. An 1887 championship series between Street. Louis and Detroit drew 51,000 paying spectators. The American League, AL, was formed in 1901, 
and two years later the two leagues staged a championship between their teams. In 1903, the Boston Red Sox beat the Pittsburgh Pirates in the first World Series. An overall increase in American leisure time. Created by the innovation of labor-saving household devices as well as a reduction in the average laborers. Work week helped baseball become the national sport and its favorite pastime. Played on an open field, the game harkened back to the nation's agrarian roots. But with its standardized rules and reliance on statistics, it looked forward to a modern, industrialized future. Who invented the telegraph? Though the invention came as the result of several decades of research by many people, Samuel F. B. Morse, 1791-1872, is credited with making the first practical telegraph. The first instrument that could send messages across wires via electricity, in 1837. Morse was a portrait painter in Boston when he became interested in magnetic telegraphy in about 1832, with technical assistance from chemistry professor Leonard Gale. 1800 to 1883, and financial support from Alfred Vail, 1807 to 1859, Morse conducted further experiments. He also developed Morse code, a system of variously arranged dots and dashes which can be used to transmit messages. For example, the most frequently used letter of the alphabet is E, which is rendered in Morse code by using one dot. The less frequently used Z is rendered by two dashes followed by two dots. By 1837 Morse had demonstrated the telegraph to the public in New York, Philadelphia and Washington, D.C. He received a patent for his invention in the United States in 1840. In 1843 his invention got a boost when the U.S. Congress approved an experimental line to be built between Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, Maryland. The following year, on May 24, 1844, Morse sent his first message across that line, What hath God wrought? Vail was on the receiving end of the wire. By 1861 most major U.S. cities were linked by telegraph wires. The first successful transatlantic cables were laid in 1866. Morse code transmissions called telegraphs when transmitted via above-ground wires and cable grams, or cables, when transmitted via underwater cables, were translated by operators or mechanical printers on both the sending and receiving ends of the message. The introduction of the telegraph marked the beginning of modern communications. When the first transcontinental telegraph line in the United States was completed on October 24, 1861, it eliminated the need for the Pony Express, which had briefly enjoyed the status of the fastest way to transmit a message about eight days from St. Louis, Missouri, to Sacramento, California. A distance that could be bridged by telegraph lines within minutes. The telegraph became the chief means of long distance communication. The telephone, invented 1875, which allows voice transmission over electrical wires. 
gradually replaced the telegraph. But for many decades the two technologies were both in use. What is the Ark of the Covenant? According to Judeo-Christian tradition, the Ark of the Covenant is a decorative box that holds the tablets containing the Ten Commandments, also called the Law. The Ark was constructed by skilled craftsmen in Sinai, it was made exactly to God's specifications, which are first mentioned in the Bible in Exodus 25 10-22. The Israelites carried the ark with them into the promised land. Where King Solomon, 10th century BC, built a permanent temple to house it. When the Babylonians captured Jerusalem in 586 BC, the ark was either destroyed or taken. If it survived, its location is a mystery that has intrigued scholars and archaeologists as well as popular culture. However, some scholars believe the Ark never really existed. Why is the Ballet's Russes famous? The notoriety of the Ballet's Russes began on a May night in 1909. It was then that the company, created by Russian impresario Sergei Dyagulov, 1872-1929, performed innovative ballet choreographed by Michel Fokin, 1880-1942. The Parisian audience, made up of the city's elite, was wowed by the choreography, set design, and musical scores. As well as the performances of the lead dancers the athletic vigor of Vaslav Nijinsky. The delicate beauty of Tamara Karsavina, the expressiveness of Anna Pavlova, and the exotic quality of Ida Rubinstein. Ballet had been freed of the constraints and conventions that had held it captive. The art form was reawakened. The reforms were on every level, choreography, performance, costuming, and design. The company's chief set designer was Leon Vaxt, 1866-1924, whose sense of color had influenced not only stage designs but even women's fashions. Soon Dyagulov and the ballet's Russes were at the center of the art world. Major 20th century painters, including Robert Edmund Jones, Pablo Picasso, André de Rain, Henry Matisse, and Joan Miro, created set and costume designs for the dance company. And Dyagulov commissioned music that could match the spectacular dancing choreography, and decor of his ballets. History's most celebrated composers, including Maurice Ravel, Claude Debussy, Richard Strauss, Sergei Prokofiev, and Igor Stravinsky, provided the scores for the dances performed by ballets Russes. The company, under Dyagulov's direction, had created a completely different kind of dance drama. Bringing ballet out of the shadows of opera and asserting it as an art form unto itself. The ballet companies of today are the lasting legacy of the ballet's Russes. Dyagulov illustrated that through a collaborative process. Excellent art could be created outside the traditional academy. 
the ballet's russes provided 20th century dance with the model of the touring ballet company and seasonal repertory. Who wrote the Quran? The Quran, or Quran, contains the holy scriptures of Islam and was written by the followers of the Prophet Muhammad, c. 570 to 632. It is not known whether these texts were written down during Muhammad's lifetime or after his death. It is known that the texts were codified, organized into a body, between 644 and 656. Muslims believe the Angel Gabriel revealed the book to Muhammad, beginning in 610 and continuing until the Prophet's death in 632. The Quran Meaning recitation, consists of 114 verses, ayahs, that are organized in chapters, surahs. Muslims believe the beautiful prose of the Quran to be the words of God himself, who spoke through Muhammad. Further, it is believed to be only a copy of an eternal book, which is kept by Allah. The Quran is also held up by Muslims as proof that Muhammad was Indeed a prophet since no human is capable of composing such text. Among the most widely read texts today, the Quran is also taught orally so that even Muslims who are illiterate may know and be able to recite verses. What was the Brahmer coup d'etat? It was the overthrow on November 9, 1799, of the French Revolutionary Government. The coup put Napoleon Bonaparte, 1769-1821, in power as one of three councils intended to head the government. While Napoleon was in Egypt and Syria waging what were for the most part successful military campaigns on behalf of the French government, there was growing discontent back home with the Directory. The group of five men who had governed France since 1795. His army stranded in the Middle East. Napoleon received word that France might soon be under attack by the Second Coalition. The second in a series of six alliances that formed in Europe in order to stave off French domination. Leaving another man in command of his troops, Napoleon hurried home where he was welcomed as a hero. Aided by his brother, Lucien Bonaparte, 1775 to 1840, and the French revolutionary leader Emmanuel Joseph C. Is. 1748 to 1836, Napoleon carried out a coup d'état, overthrowing the Directory. A consulate was formed, with the young Napoleon becoming first consul. The other councils had little influence, acting primarily as advisors to the ambitious Napoleon. The coup marked the end of the French Revolution after the chaos and violence of the previous decade. The French people looked to Napoleon as a strong leader who could bring order to the country. They did not know that the 30-year-old possessed a seemingly insatiable hunger for power, which would soon transform the government into a dictatorship. 
After a brief peace, Napoleon declared himself Emperor of France on December 2, 1804. By which time he had already begun to wage a series of wars to gain himself more power in Europe. What was the first disease conquered by human beings? Smallpox was the first disease eradicated by medicine. Caused by a virus spread from person to person through the air. Smallpox was one of the most feared diseases and there was no treatment for it. Before the discovery of the New World, smallpox epidemics swept across Africa, Asia, and Europe leaving victims scarred and slash or blind, and killing countless millions. When explorers set out to find new trade routes and landed in North and South America, they brought the disease with them, infecting the indigenous peoples. But once a person had the disease, he or she would not contract it again. This and other observations led British physician Edward Jenner 1749-1823 to develop a successful vaccine against the disease. Prior to the vaccine, the only preventive method was inoculation of the disease itself, which sometimes led to further spread of the disease. For example, in 1777 American General George Washington 1732-1799 obtained congressional approval to inoculate the entire Continental Army against smallpox, but the results were mixed. After its discovery in 1798 the use of Jenner's vaccine quickly spread. The first vaccine given in the United States was in 1799 by a Harvard physician. During the 1800s many countries passed laws requiring vaccination. Improvements in the vaccine resulted in the elimination of smallpox from Europe and North America by the 1940s. When the World Health Organization who, was created by the United Nations in 1946. One of its aims was to reduce the instances of smallpox around the world. Immunization programs brought this about. The last natural occurrence of the disease was reported in October 1977 in Somalia, Africa when no further cases were documented within the next two years, the disease was considered eradicated. <laughs>